Perfect. Okay. So thank you everybody for showing up. You could be anywhere on a Saturday. And as, I, as we said, we've never done a Saturday um, because people are busy, but we really wanted to make sure that we did get around Penn Live in, in March. And so this was the timing that it was going to be. So uh, do we have any first timers? And we have any first timers would love to just throw it in the chat and you're going to get used to me um, moving you to the chat and being able <laughs> to interact because engage people engage and engage people engage in their business and with their horses etc all right we have a first timer denise welcome super happy to have you here so what is the round pen oh betty ann's a first time too Woohoo! this is awesome um and we've got some that are in every time and show up for everything and so um what is the round pen and so right off the bat i love to say the round pen is all of us and so we have a facebook page um and so if you're not in there check just find the round pen on facebook but the whole point is it's where professional facilitators inspire innovative ideas and so I really want to be clear off the bat this is, uh, my name is Tamara Cinnamon this is my business partner Jessica Koshif and um, we we work together and really we have our own separate facilities we also work together doing this um, but we're not the professional facilitators we all together putting our hand in the middle with ideas doing this work on a daily basis we're all those professional facilitators so um, welcome to the round pen if you haven't been before and uh, we do this once a month and it's just a live training to hopefully help horse facilitators facilitators, people in horse facilitated development, grow their business, grow their confidence, and truly get this incredible work that we do out on a much higher level. So And have a community as well. That's a really important aspect because we always had each other when we got certified. And just having someone to connect with that understood how sessions work or how the industry works is, is really pivotal in running a business as well. 100%. So let's, uh, let's jump to it. If I can get my slide to move. All right, so quick housekeeping, I think you already are, but uh, this is meant to be interactive. So use the chat, use the reactions. When we ask questions, participate as you are. Um, this is how we all grow. Um, so post, if you can, keep your camera on. We're equine entrepreneurs. Doesn't matter what you look like. I said before, I said my hair is terrible, but I'm an equine entrepreneur, doesn't matter, right? <laughs> um, when we can't figure out tech, doesn't matter. We're equine entrepreneurs, right? And so um, we all have a crazy life in the background. If we can keep mute, that's fantastic just so we can uh, really uh, respect each other and yes we're recording we don't record everything but we always record the round pen life this is for all of us to grow and really you know build build businesses so and just a reminder to sign up for the newsletter because we will post a link to youtube if you have to go early or if you miss anything as well you can catch the rest yeah and you're gonna get the bonus exercise through your email as well so Let's move through. So uh, who are Jess and I? Just real quickly, we run a business called Equine Facilitated Way together. We do that online. We do everything from certification, premium programs, mentorship. Um, and we always say we know how this game works because we're in the trenches too. We're doing the same work. We have our own facilities. And in our facilities, we filled very, very quickly. So we realize that the need is out there. But where the biggest need lies in, is in equine entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. We know this work works. You know this work works. Um, we all know the power and the magic of the horse-human connection, um, but we need more equine entrepreneurs. And so that's why we started you know, Equine Entrepreneurs, that's why we started the Round Pen, and that's what we're excited about. So giveaway time. Jess has a pen and paper. She's going to write down everybody who is on here. Uh, she's going to write down everybody's name. And what's going to happen is at the end, probably not live because I don't have the spin wheel ready she's going to put everyone's name in a spin wheel and you're going to get to choose one of two things if you win number one it's either a mentorship so one-on-one -on -one hour with either myself or jess um focused on how we can help you with either horses business or mindset to grow your business okay or you're going to get our sponsorship program and our sponsorship program uh what it does is ensure that in your facility you never have to turn away people because they can't afford it and so it's helping you uh on top of you know, all of the other ways that you can bring in financial um, backing into your business. So it could be, you know, maybe it's autism or maybe there's different grants, et cetera. This is a total private funding sponsorship program that shows you how to do it. So you're never turning people away. So whoever wins is going to get to pick from one of the two. So, um, yeah, they are amazing, Denise. They're definitely uh, for myself, I haven't turned somebody away in two and a half years. And if somebody comes and we can provide 
that transformation and growth for them. So they're my niche client. They're the right people. Mm -hmm. We can always put them through. And it's an amazing, amazing piece to have. So especially without feeling the need of that, you have to do the work for free because your heart is there and you want to help people. Yeah. That bleeding heart piece, right? We can't, uh, we can't do that. So uh, yeah. How do you choose? Mm -hmm. Well, let's hope you win and you get the opportunity, Betty. And I love it. So let's get going. And so Right off the bat, I love to talk about course facilitated development. Uh, a sponsorship program is not just Canada US. No, it's about how do you create a private sponsorship through partnering with some local businesses so that, yeah, like Denise says, so you don't do a lot of work for free. Because when we get in that place, it doesn't matter how passion on fire we are. When we're giving away too much for free, we move ourselves towards burnout because we have to, you know, pay for our horses. We have to pay for vet bills. We have to steward our animals at the highest possible level and that all costs money, right? So yeah, I totally hear you, totally hear you. So, um, all right, so let's get going. So this week is about how to crush imposter syndrome. And this is something, I mean, I'm coaching equine entrepreneurs all day, every day. And this is something that really runs deep in this work. Um, how to eliminate excuses and how to build your business. We all have this piece of, we understand the horse human connection. We understand the power of that. It's the often, I always say often uh, indescribable, but always undeniable piece that happens through horse and human, between horse and human. And as you can see, I'm super passionate about that but I'm equally as passionate about the business side. Why? Because if we don't know how to run a business, we can't get clients in the door, et cetera, et cetera. We can't steward our horses. We can't do this work and we can't share the power of the herd and the horses around the world. So the last thing I wanna talk about is uh, horse facilitated development. That's what we do. And people say, what is horse facilitated development? Horse facilitated development, it, well, it's allowing the horses to step up allowing them to facilitate the magic and what needs to happen. But it's also a safe space amongst us, amongst the realm and where you come. So whether you do counseling, whether you do equine facilitated wellness, therapeutic riding, I just don't know what I do, but I do the magic of the horse human connection. I want you to know you're in the right place. Okay. And so we do that under the umbrella of horse facilitated development. I'm going to talk a bit more about that today, but I just want you to know if you work with the magic of horses and humans, you're in the right place. Okay. All right. Who wants to get going? Let's figure out this slideshow and make it happen. Maybe. All right. So what is, so if we're going to talk about imposter syndrome. Okay. And I'd love to know in the chat, any of you either currently feel imposter syndrome or have felt imposter syndrome when it comes to this work. So what is it? Number one. So it refers to people. Yeah. So on and off, Christelle, love the vulnerability. We can't get congruent if we're not willing to get vulnerable. So yeah, on and off. Awesome. And I'll tell you for myself, of course I feel that way. Betty's, Betty Ann's saying the same. So it refers to people who often are high achievers. This is an important piece. Who doubt their accomplishments and fear being discovered as a fraud. And have you ever had that? Fraud's a big word. And if we have a fear on any level of being discovered, like, ooh, this doesn't really work, or you don't have a mental health background, what do you think you're doing? Or, 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 right? Imagine then going out with your herd that's reflecting what's happening for you, right? They're picking up and reflecting how you're showing up in an environment. Your clients who read body language, because we've all done it our whole life, is also feeling that, can you see how even a little bit of that doubt being in there really muddies the water in uh, how we can show up and how we can work with horses? Anybody? So I know for myself, um, most definitely there's times. And so number one, we need to know what is imposter syndrome. But number two, I think it's really important for us to look at, are you actually impostering? Because imposter syndrome isn't just something made up that is not true in your mind. Sometimes, being devil's advocate, it is 100% true. And my so answer. my first, oh, do I have someone? Oh, maybe, maybe someone not muted. Um, so my first question for you is, are you working in a lane that's not yours? So what do I mean by that? A niche. If you've heard me talk, you've heard me talk a lot about working in a niche, working in the space that you're one step ahead, working with the people that you can actually personally help affect change with. 
And are you willing to stay in that lane? And so, um, you know, it could be that you're, you've never worked with children. You don't enjoy working with children. You're best with adults, but you keep, because people are offering to pay you, you keep working with children. It's not your comfort zone. You're not comfortable. You're thinking, and, and oftentimes I think it's the opposite. Maybe you're real comfortable with kids, but you're some reason getting the safe house, bringing out women at risk. And you're like, I got this, mm -hmm. but you don't got it. So that's my first question to ask myself when I'm feeling imposter syndrome. Am I working in my lane or am I working with people that I shouldn't be working with just to make a buck? And that's real blunt, but that's the honest truth. So any of you, hey, Kimber, nice to see you here. Any of you feel that some imposter syndrome comes from the fact that you're not working in the right lane? You're not working with the people that you should be working with. Anybody have that? Give it a sec. I know that happens to me all the time. You know, mm -hmm. if I end up, somebody comes um, and, uh, you know, when I feel it probably the most, I have a need to work with people that are ready to change, that are ready to work on something. They might not know what it is, but they're ready. Mm -hmm. And then I get people who come and they kind of want to play with play with horses. And that's where I am fully impostering. I don't play with horses, you know? And so when I'm in there, I'm so far out of my lane, you could feel it a mile away. Yeah, Denise, still trying to figure out your niche. Love that. And Denise, stick around. I talk about niche all the time and we've got some big training on niche, so we can do that. So second question. Are you trying to do this this work the way the gurus do it, right? <laughs> and so who's the guru in your world, right? Maybe it's uh, Linda Kahana. Maybe it's somebody else who does this work and you think, man, like they're, they're the cat's ass. They're the best of the best in this business. And so I'm just trying to mimic and imposter them. Mm -hmm. You are uniquely you. And when you zoom in far enough on your strengths and gifts, you're, you know, nobody can touch you, but you also can't copy and mimic somebody else. Okay. So that's the second thing around imposter is that so many times we actually are impostering when we feel imposter syndrome. Um, Carmody's saying, I see it happens more. So when people come that still don't understand what we do and ever been around horsemanship and riding. Okay. Yeah. So again, it's just looking to ourselves. Where are we impostering? Because I think that that's really important, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of people finish their certification or maybe they don't have one. They start looking to other people or the people that taught them. And there's a piece in there that can feel incongruent. So impostering is really incongruence, okay? Mm -hmm. And the whole point of this conversation is not to say I don't imposter. It's to find the place where you're not on rock solid ground with your feet on saying, this is who I am. This is what I do. And it's it's a really interesting piece and very, very common. Like we, we work with equine entrepreneurs all over the world. And it's really common to feel this way once you've come out you've you've researched where you're going to get certified you go through the training and it's not what you thought it was going to be and it leaves you feeling with this self-doubt hey yeah yeah for sure and understanding that what you bring to the table is so uniquely important and so you can't take that piece out you really need to find that piece as Denise said and put it in you know mm -hmm. what is you know your niche is where you just were it's one step ahead of where you just were it's the tools you needed when you were there and the last one I think is really really important is are you just simply puppeteering your horses around with an expected outcome and so we see this a lot in horse work where mm -hmm. people um they're not in the present and so they therefore say okay so i'm this is how i'm supposed to do it right and so they follow the gurus i have to do this then this then this then this well if you're puppeteering horses around with an expected outcome at some point you're going to hit imposter why because that's not how the horse human connection works horses work on congruence they step up when someone's vulnerable enough to find congruence when they find congruence the horse reflects back to the human what's going on as they're reflecting in their current surroundings we can't expect a certain outcome if we actually allow the horses to step up so as anybody feel then and is vulnerable and willing to say that yeah you know what i think i am actually impostering i am trying to do it the way somebody else does it or i am trying to do it the way i'm told um and looking for that gold star or maybe working in another lane anyone because I know for myself, I can be vulnerable. And I'm going to tell a story in a moment that talks about a long while that I did this business feeling completely impostered and, you know, kind of the work it took to get through the other side. So I'll leave that thought with you. So 
zone of imposter. You hear me talk about zone of genius all the time. But here's the thing, zone of imposter, imposter runs ridiculously high when you work in the zone of incompetence. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I know there's some of you that feel like, what are you talking about incompetence? I am an equine entrepreneur. <laughs> and as an equine entrepreneur, I'm tough. I'm tough as nails, I can do everything. I'm here to tell you that we're not all great. Sorry, not sorry. There is way more people in the world that are great at things that you are incompetent at, okay? Um, Christelle is saying, what makes me wonder is that I came into this later in life and still learning everything and anything about horses. Great. You've got to be able to look at the pieces that you feel hold you back um, and know of which ones of them are maybe sitting in incompetence. Uh, Raven's saying, I'm still trying to figure it out by myself now, alone in a very rural area that I'm not from. I love that you're here, Raven. I know you're brand new to the round pen and that's what this is about is a creating community. So let's talk about incompetence real quick. Incompetence is the lowest and we all have things that we're incompetent at. And what are those things? There are things that most of the world is better than us, or a lot of the world is better than us at. There are things that when you do them, you are getting no positive feedback. If anything, you're probably getting negative feedback. Uh, there's absolutely no joy in doing those things. And so let's throw in, what is something incompetence for you? And incompetence is the idea you can't do it. The whole thing is that you really shouldn't do it, okay? And so incompetence, just give this, not a story, but just an example. What's something that you shouldn't be dipping your toes in? Uh, my Doing my taxes. Okay, yeah, taxes, okay? Um, and so not that Jessica couldn't, she's very, I mean, <laughs> she can go on in YouTube and we could figure this out, but in incompetence and in doing her taxes, it brings no joy. She's getting no positive feedback and there are a huge amount of people in the world that can do it way better than her. So not only is that incompetence, it's also the place that imposter runs the highest when we're working in areas we shouldn't be working. So uh, let's hear it. So Denise is saying, I felt the imposter issue, but it's getting better as I see the healing happen in my arena with my team and our way of doing it completely. Yeah. I love that, our <laughs> way of doing it. And we're gonna get to that. Um, trying to follow other people's su suggested scripts. Totally bad, Ian. absolutely, you it can't. Was reminds me of when you when you get certified and then you get the exercises and then you try, try and follow the exercises step by step and yeah I, I get that <laughs> totally I love this Raven says I can help with taxes that's the thing <laughs> in incompetence you actually like and I think the same thing with accounting and bookkeeping and receipts everywhere um and when you are working in a zone of incompetence, imposter is running very, very high because you are impostering. Pretending you can do taxes when you should not be touching them is full imposter, okay? And when you're in that place, it can be very hard to believe that that is someone else's zone of genius. And so Raven's going, I can help with that. I love that. That's the interesting yin and yang of the world, I think. And so, yeah, someone's saying, where are you located? <laughs> so incompetence. Okay, so there's no joy. You are getting negative feedback. That's often the place you feel like a martyr and you're like, are you kidding me? I just worked my butt off to do the taxes and you're complaining that I'm Definitely. grumpy, <laughs> you know, or that I, you know, again, as an example, right? So where do we go from incompetence? So I always say in incompetence, you should delete or delegate 95% of the things that you are doing that you are incompetent at you should delete them out of your life or you should delegate them to somebody who that's their zone of genius. Call Raven, get her to do your tax. Okay. <laughs> but you hear, like, you hear me, right? And so delete or delegate 95% of that. Okay. There are people way like, sorry, not sorry. There are people way better at you. And if you're wasting your time in that space, you're, I'm going to use Raven's word. You're going to become very familiar with imposter syndrome. And not only your horses, but the humans can feel that a mile away, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's a bad place to sit. So where do we go from incompetence? We move up the scale a little bit. So there is still imposter incompetence, but we're a little bit better at it. So we might get a little bit joy out of things we do when we're working in the zone of competence. But here's the thing, it's a little bit um, it is nowhere near the amount of joy. The only joy, to be honest, is that we got the job done. Anybody ever done that? Things. So I'm going to give you an example of competence for me would be I can build a website. 
I have struggled far enough through incompetence to figure out how the heck to build a website. But, the but, the only joy is that I got the damn thing done. The feedback, it might not be negative, but it's real neutral. I'm thinking, are you kidding me? I just built a website. Like, why is the world not thinking I'm amazing at this website? Because it's just competence. You're not amazing. I'm not, that's not my zone of genius. That's not where I cook you know, with all, or I, you know, run on all cylinders. It's not where we're cooking with gas. And so let's hear it from, I just want to give a moment in the chat. What is something in your business that competence? So again, for me, I can build a website. That's a competence piece, but the only joy is that I get it done. Number one, number two, there is not a whole bunch of great feedback. And number three, most of the world is way better than me at doing it. So why am I wasting my energy and talents and sitting in imposter going like, someone's going to find out that this website was built by an amateur, right? That's <laughs> how imposter works. Um, so what's the pieces that you are incompetent, or sorry, you're incompetent. It's like you can do it, but you shouldn't be. So Denise is saying marketing. Love it, Denise. There's a big part of the world that is phenomenal at marketing. They can find your niche clients for you. And you could pay them out of the money you make spending your time in your zone of genius, <laughs> okay? But again, so often we spend a huge amount of our time in these low, low zones. Uh, Lynn is saying, and I can hear it in Lynn's voice, I can do social media posts. Maybe doesn't mean I should. We start shooting on ourselves. Oh, just because I can, I should. The joy is so low in these places. I guarantee in your business, when you're working in incompetence, or competence and think about your your clients what clients are you working with that you can work with doesn't mean you should be working with you're working in a zone of imposter okay um i can do my bookkeeping and i hired it out last year yes betty and yes because when you're not wasting time in incompetence and competence you get to move up the scale uh, and start working where you can truly be effective and move into a zone of empowerment as opposed as opposed to a zone of imposter. Okay. Um, there's a few. Yeah, I can't keep up with the long one on. Maybe you can, Jess. Yeah, yeah, Jess has the chat. It's just a little long for me. There you go. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So we're still feeling imposter. Okay. Then we move up to excellence. And here's the thing. Excellence is a real tricky place because in incompetence, you're, you're on like a quick road to burnout like that. And in some ways, it's a very beautiful feedback me mechanism. You go in, you go to do something you shouldn't be doing. And let's say changing your oil on your truck or tractor or something. If, if that's an in incompetent zone for you, you need to call a mechanic or take <laughs> your truck or your tractor to a mechanic. Okay. And you're thinking like, why would I want to do that? Like, it's just so incompetent. And you think about yourself in your overalls, if you've never changed oil That'd and you got <laughs> overalls on and you're ready to change, you're just impostering and every, like the neighbors are driving by, like, what is she doing? I love to change oil and I love <laughs> to do these type of things. So again, it, it becomes that aside where like, I'm going to empower you. you call me over to change your oil. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to like empower you in this process because it's that opposite piece of imposter. Okay. But in incompetence, when you go up to change the oil and it's not your thing and you got your suit on and guess what happens? You're walking with the full oil filter and you trip and boom, you go down and there's oil everywhere. Like there's instant feedback that pushes you to that place of not only imposter, um, but also burnout. Incompetence, Burnout still runs really high. It just takes a little bit longer. But here's the problem with excellence. The zone of excellence, I call the zone of success. Imposter sits in excellence, but it sits in the back seat. Why? Because you have a little bit more joy when you do things in excellence. You're getting really good feedback when you're in excellence. People love what you're doing. Um, for example, maybe you're working with the wrong clientele, but you have clientele. They're paying you. They're raving fans. They're telling you how much their kids love coming to you. They're telling their friends. Their friends are bringing people out. So there is success, but, and we work with the but in horse work. You on some level dread going out to your pasture and you don't know why. Why? You're working in the wrong zone. 
you're impostering. So again, maybe it's that you're working with children and you know that's not the group you should be working with. That's not your niche. But here's why it's so risky. And I got a lot more slides. I guess I got to keep going. But here's why it's so risky. You're still on the road to burnout, but it's a very slow burn. And you do not identify it like that when you trip with the oil and incompetence. You don't identify it so quickly. And so you have this very slow burn. And then you use the excuse, well, we're making money and everybody's happy. I must just be getting tired of this or I must just be. But you can't look at it. It's that your body has taken a very slow burn to burnout and you're getting exhausted. OK, very risky. So let's uh, let's move up. So think about that zone of excellence. What is it for you? For me, definitely working with kids. Everybody loves it. Everybody thinks it's phenomenal except for me. And it's the quickest zone I have to get out of because it's the slowest burn to burn out. So let's talk about zone of empowerment. Let's talk about your zone of genius. And I hope that you go back and you do this work because the only way to have a business that you truly love that keeps you out of imposter syndrome is to find the zone of genius and work solely in that zone of empowerment. And so in the zone of genius, that's where you're cooking with gas. That's where you're the person who zooms in far enough to what you're the best at and nobody can touch you because you're phenomenal in that place. That's where you share your passion on fire and people want to sign up. Jess and I were in a hot tub last night for <laughs> in our zone of genius talking about the work we do and had to turn down people who wanted to drive an hour to come to our ranch to have sessions. Okay. And, uh, you know, it just wasn't good timing completely. My, I work with men mostly, um, and completely the people I should be working with. Are we, were we trying to get business? No, we're not having sessions today, <laughs> but the people show up when you are working passion on fire only in your zone of genius. It's the place where you are the best in the world at. Um, it's the place where Raven says, I'll do taxes. I love it. I got <laughs> this and can really put the magic to that taxes, you know? And so in genius, imposter does not reside in genius, just like empowerment, impact, uh, transformation and growth does not reside in incompetence. And so if you're building your business and most of what you are doing is either in excellence, competence, or incompetence, you're not only on the way to burnout, you're living in imposter. To what level? Depends on how low you're going down the ladder. People can smell it a mile away when you're working from a space of incompetence. So I don't want to move on before I hear from you. What is your zone of genius? When it comes to horses, what is the thing that people love about your place? What is the thing that you know, if I work always with these people, I am, I'm really, really good at. And this is something in the bottom levels, incompetent competence. It's really easy to come up with the things that you're good at doing because you're spending a lot of time there. But what's your genius? What's your thing that if there was, if you were stuck in a hot tub and you had to talk to the people there, <laughs> that they could truly, like you're changing their world just by talking about that passion on fire. What is it for you? Um, what is that piece? I want to know in the chat, what is the piece that you bring forward where there is no imposter? You're sitting in that place of empowerment because you are the strongest person at that. Where is your strength? Let's get them in the chat. Resilience. Love it, Carmody. Great one worder. I love that. It's resilience. Not everybody has it. And here's the key. Usually human sexuality, beautiful. Usually your piece of genius, your piece of empower, it's something that comes to you naturally. It's something that you say, oh yeah, resilience. Yeah, of course I'm resilient, but I always, I, I just am. That's what I'm good at. Not the rest of the world is resilient if that was your piece. Okay, so what is your piece? Lynn, we offer a place of peace, sanctuary, and acceptance. Lynn, powerful. That comes easy to you if it's in your zone of genius. That does not come easy to the rest of the world. And we hold space, impact, and empowerment when we work solely from our zone of genius. So there's just something in the chat here that I think is really relevant to what we're talking about. And, and it's Raven... Um, saying about it's more about people not knowing what i have to offer and ignorance now for me the, my when we talk about zone of genius there's a certain element of alignment that happens 
um, and an immediate feedback, which is something that we work with with horses, right? It, the same thing happens with people. And I definitely draw a line in my business and my clients where if I'm if I'm feeling that the client is ignorant and not on the same page as me and I have to explain to a degree that is more than what I the, the more what I usually do, they're just not the right person to be around my horses to be around me like I just there's, there's a firm line there for me because it takes me out of genius so I think it's it's and maybe you mean something else um but I think it's really relevant to what we're talking about and and truly thinking about do I want to be feeling like my clients are ignorant and I have to over explain everything versus that alignment that genius that flow where the words you use and the way you connect and communicate really resonates with that person, with the client that mm -hmm. you're working with. Yeah. And I think as Raven went on to say, I mean more that the community so far, the people I've served, you mean more to the community than people that are not local. And, you know, this is a really good example, Raven, yeah. of the zone of excellence where, um, you know, you might be getting great feedback out of those people. Um, you might think I'm kind of enjoying this. This is that place where there's a level beyond excellence. There's a level beyond success and it, and it's called significance. And that's where genius rides. And so oftentimes um, we get uh, we get close and it's kind of close, but not quite. And that's just a really good push that there's there's another level for you and that your brilliance, Raven, is just a little higher than the people that have come you know and so it's zoning into that um okay yeah i think i'm losing myself in the trap so let's keep going so my first question is always am i acting in imposter okay and where what level if you're not in genius you're acting in imposter and where are you allowing yourself to work at you know a lower level than the excellence that you can bring so zone of genius, you have a powerful zone of genius um, and it's only working from that space that the magic happens. That's where you attract people in and you think like, you know, all of a sudden all your marketing is working. Everything you're saying, the right people are coming in because you're working at the level that you're here to work at. That's when your horses step up. That's when you see dramatic transformation and growth in yourself, in your clients, in your horses, because everybody is working at that highest level. Um, so imposter and significance, imposter and empowerment don't reside in the same room. And so my question to you is what room do you wanna to commit to working in? So as you think about that, um, what room? Is it imposter and are you willing to put up with that? Or are you willing to take that step into significance? So, Second part of this. So if we make, if we all make this decision and I'd love to know, are you willing to, are you willing to delegate and delete those things that are no longer serving you and they're no longer serving your clients and holding you in a space because imposter truly comes from working in a space that is not your space to work in. Okay. So I'd love to know in the chat, I'm going to give it a moment. Are you willing to say, yeah, it is time to get rid of some of those things. And when I feel imposter, it's time to move up and work at a much higher level. And I think that's the piece is that when you're really great at something, like you say, breaking down those skills, um, figuring out how to share out those skills uh, and understand that that's maybe why you're a facilitator as well. So, uh, so let's talk about a business. So a limited, so now we've decided we're not going to work in imposter. We're going to figure out what it is that we're best in the world. And honestly, you get to decide whether you buy into, Hey, I am the best in the world at something. And I have a deserve a lot of people who hold themselves in the lower levels. It's a deserving piece. They're not actually sure that they deserve to work at that highest possible level with their niche clients, um, at a level that can truly empower and change the world. And so Look at that, you know, look at that imposter piece as well. So if we can get over this imposter piece, it's time to talk about building a business. So I love, yeah, it is time doing massages and body work on, on excellence and not the way I want to serve. Ooh, Betty Ann, that's yes. vulnerable. It's vulnerable to say what I know and what I do is close, but no cigar. Like I'm so close, but you know, very vulnerable. I love it. It is time, Betty Ann. Um, I'm excited to help, uh, you know, anywhere we can and watch that along. So yeah, whoever put the little fire in there in the heart, love it. All right, let's talk about building a business then. So 
Well, it's time to eliminate excuses and build your business. So my first question, <laughs> are you actually in business? So are you actually in business? So many of us, we understand the horse human connection. We had that feeling, but are we in business? So my question, are you an entrepreneur? This takes it down one step further. It's amazing how many people working with horses do not think of themselves as business owners, do not think of themselves as an entrepreneur. They think about themselves as somebody that helps people with horses. It's a really interesting piece. And so really vulnerable, honest right now, do you believe, do you look at yourself as an entrepreneur? Or do you see yourself as somebody that helps people with horses? And this is just vulnerable time because if you don't know where you're at or you're not willing to look at where you're at, mm -hmm. you can't get to where you want to go. And if you showed up for this call, I know you want to build a business. I know you're committed to getting rid of imposter syndrome, but you got to be honest and vulnerable to this piece. Yeah, so we've got a both. It's like, I'd like to be the entrepreneur. I, I love this, Christelle. I like to be the entrepreneur, yeah. but it's a scary word for me. Yeah. And that's why I threw out the word business and entrepreneur, because we got to know where we're at, you know? Um, and that's the reality is that for this work that is so powerful to go around the world, and we all have that peace inside of us, that burning desire to share this incredible work, we have to understand we're in business. When we step up to that level, people understand that we're serious. We're not just playing with ponies and it makes all the difference in the world. Jess? Yeah, it, all of these pieces just make me kind of come back to the labels that we we kind of assign ourselves. And, you know, if we get certified and the last word is coach versus a guide versus a facilitator and how that really impacts us and can affect things like imposter syndrome you know like coach is a very you know makes me think of like sports and all of the above you know so there's there's so many labels and how you identify and and resonating that piece making sure you're clear on, on all absolutely that. and um you know and finding that place and so someone says i need to get over my belief oh uh, that I'm not capable of running my own business. Yeah, for sure. Figuring out how you move up, how you get rid of imposter, how you, um, you know, find that piece. And I'll tell you, I I'll give you a little story. When I first started this work, I did equine assisted learning and I lived in imposter. Every day I went out and someone said, what do you do? I said, equine assisted learning. I lived in imposter. I didn't want to talk about this business. Why? Because the equines in my world don't help with the work. They don't assist. My horses are kick-ass. They are professionals. <laughs> when I step back and I realize I'm a contributor, that's all I am. I contribute to this incredible work. My horses, they I'm not a therapist, but my horses provide absolutely incredible therapy. And this idea, and it went for me, and I'll be honest, it went from genius to I can really do this work to oh I'm only helping but I don't have a mental health degree but I'm not of this I'm not of that I'm not of that and very soon I was in full-blown imposter why because of equine assisted learning that the horses were helping the horses were never helping my horses are gurus they're professionals they facilitate at a very very high level and we work very very high trauma that's where we work uh today when I finally got my head around, it's time to start working in the av or in the world of horse facilitated development, of horse facilitated therapy. The horses facilitate absolutely incredible transformation and results. And it was that piece that allowed me to say, "All right, I'm in business. It's start. It's time to start cooking with gas." So I hear a lot of equine entrepreneurs with that same issue. Mm -hmm. Feel free to use it. Horse facilitated development has changed ev everything in my business. When I talk to people, they understand the work that they we do. They understand we yeah. work at a very high level. There was such a disconnect. I know even even in our training, you know, it's like, well, how do you how do you, in a really short sentence, define EAL equine assisted learning? It was all, it, people used to get tripped up a lot. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I'll tell you on the level of working with the ministry, working with Veterans Affairs, et cetera, it's changed absolutely everything. You know, people say, well, what do you do? Our horses, like, again, our horses are the gurus. When we can work at a level for any of us, regardless of what you call it, where your horses are the gurus, and you can allow yourself to simply contribute to that at the highest possible level, you will pull yourself out of imposter very, very quickly. It's not about you. It never was about you. If, if it was, you could be working with cats. There's a reason we work <laughs> with horses. Allow them to be the gurus. Um, Betty Ann saying, yes, been running my own massage energy business for 24 years and want to impact and empower horse women and their horses through body, mind, and heart Good and niche. help them understand the role of emotional regulation. But what a <laughs> niche. What a niche. Zero in on that. What a niche. And again, I love that place of, yes, I run a business. Okay. If you truly have people, and we all do, that we want to empower, we need to get our heads around that we are running a business. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's super, super important. Look how brilliantly that flowed too in the, in how you define yourself. It just flows. It comes out. There's no thoughts on how do I word this or how do I explain this to someone? Yeah. So Carmody is saying, what if you're both therapists and have amazing horses with great intuition? Again, it's got to be your line for Modi. For me, I, I'm a phenomenal facilitator. I'm not being cocky. I am. I ask great questions. I'm really good with intuition. But I personally believe I'll never be at the level of a horse and what they provide in being able to reflect um, people in as they're showing up in their current surroundings. So that's my belief. What's your belief? Because that's what you're going to hear me talk about all the time. Whenever I'm coaching business, you're uniquely you. So Carmody, you're uniquely you. Um, and it's not about kicking against. It's about you deciding what your piece is. And so that's huge. Lynn, uh, Lynn does HFD. Uh, yeah, she does horse facilitated development. It's e way easier to explain, gives you a new breath for what you do. Absolutely. Get congruent, figure out a way to get congruent so that you can get rid of the imposter syndrome. When imposter is all about um, not being congruent. Yeah, horse facilitated development. Yeah, Denise, use it, love it, hashtag it. Um, all right, so yeah, so this is the first question. Are you an entrepreneur or do you just help people with horses? You're one step away from an expensive hobby that your husband's supporting. I hate to say that, but when you're <laughs> working in this place of I'm just helping with horses, you're one step away from that. Is that the kind of impact that you wanna create? Or are you here to say, um, are you here to say like, I, you know, I have horse facilitated development business. I work with horses and humans and work on impact and transformation in the human or whatever. I mean, I don't script. I just say, because I work from a place of passion, but I'm going to tell you when I sit in the hot tub and somebody asks me what I do, <laughs> or I get stuck at a crosswalk and I can't get across, I'm passionate on fire about this work. Mm -hmm. And that's what brings people into your business. Your passion on fire, you understand the work, you're in it to win it, you're a business person. I know I'm going to go over late today because I clearly get super passionate about this. So if we're all going to agree that we're in business, okay? If we're all going to agree that we're in business, my first question is, do you actually have a goal? If you had just spent $250,000 and bought a franchise and opened up, I don't know, Domino's Pizza or whatever it was, you better believe you'd have a goal and targets and know that you were going to do what it took to make that business a success. Not everybody wants this, but maybe you do. You showed up. You're the bold and the brave and the ones that showed up to this call, right? So my question is, if you're in business, do you actually have a goal? What's your goal? And a goal is like, come hell or high water, I'm going to figure this out. <laughs> and that can be a hard place if you haven't been in business. And sometimes that becomes telltale if you actually are in business. And so business isn't, am I making money or am I not? It's, am I treating it? Here's the thing. If you treat this like a hobby, it'll pay you like a hobby. But if you can make the decision to switch gears and treat this like a business, it'll begin to pay you like a business. Get out of imposter, work in your zone of genius, decide to give up the things that aren't serving you, work in your zone of genius, you'll get rid of imposter, make a decision to treat this business like a business and it's gonna start paying you like one. So do you have a goal? Again, I'm asking in the chat, do you have a goal? Are you building something right now 
Do you have a goal? Do you have a goal to put 50 people through your facility this year? Do you have a goal to have empower 25 lives? Do you have a goal to make X amount of dollars? I don't care what it is, but business people, entrepreneurs that are in it to win it. Mm -hmm. And I'm, as you can tell, Jess and I, we're in it to win it. Why? Because we know the power of the first human connection and we're not going to shy down to helping people share that around the world. And it's something, having a goal, like it, I always have a goal going on and it's always at the back of my mind and it's something I always think about, you know, like if you ask me right now, I could stream it off and tell you exactly what it is. And that's that focus point, right? We got to know where we're going to expect to ever get there. Okay. Treat it like a hobby. It's going to pay you like a hobby. So I love this. Lynn says by the end of the weekend, she'll have a goal because that's her goal. Great. <laughs> Great, Lynn. Let me know what it is. That's fantastic. Uh, long term to make a difference in mental health so much that it can be recognized by more mainstream services. Love it. So the way this work gets recognized by more mainstream services is by treating it like a business. Saying this is a business. I show up every day like a business. I show up in my pasture like any other entrepreneur would, ready to go to facilitate as a contributor to the highest possible level. That's how it happens. And long-term goals. So then it gives you the great question. Okay, well, what do I need to do to get there? And then you can start building those micro goals on that long-term goal. Listen to this one, retreat center with holistic healing, including the horse facilitated development. This work, I hate calling it work. <laughs> this work works. Like that's the whole thing. That's the whole point of genius. You know, most of my clients, not my wording, I'm not a mental, I do not, I'm not a therapist, I'm not a mental health advocate, but most of my work comes from therapists. Most of my work mm -hmm. comes from the community services, from veterans affairs, et cetera. And in their world, they always say, like that magic of the horse human connection, they always say, our clients have flunked out of talk therapy and they're killing it out at your ranch. Is that me? No, but I'm an entrepreneur. I'm serious about this work. Why? because I've witnessed it time and time again. We all do this work because we witnessed it in ourselves. We somewhere felt the power of this work and decided we wanted to take that next step. And whether it's a holistic healing center, which includes some of our facilitated development, whether it's wanting to create a movement around the world, whatever that is, that's why we did it. So you got to remind yourself that when you're shrinking and deciding you're not an entrepreneur, okay? No one's going to crown, crown you an entrepreneur. No one's going to give you the gold star. We're not in kindergarten anymore where we do something good and we get a gold star. So if you need a gold star, then we'll give it to you right now. Make the decision that you're an entrepreneur. Set up a goal. And when an obstacle pops up, it's an opportunity. An obstacle is always an opportunity for you to reevaluate and make a decision of whether you're actually committed to that goal. So quickly, goals versus commitments. So I love goals. Goals are the first step of the entrepreneur. But the second step and the most important step is commitments. And so I've always had a coach. I've always hired to have a coach in my life, a mentor, a person that holds me feet to the fire because I'm here. Like I'm here to be legendary. That's the, that's the way I want to live as I hope each of you do. And, uh, I had one very early on and they, so we'd set goals and he said, you know, the problem with goals is that we give ourselves excuses when we don't do them. He said, what I want you to do is start to think about your business. So you're an entrepreneur, start thinking about your business from a space of commitments. And in his world, commitments were based on results. And so I would coach with him, let's say on a Monday, and he'd say, what are you going to do this week? And I would say, well, I'll get three new, I'll make 10 calls, get three new clients, whatever it was, doesn't matter, whatever the goals I set. And you know what he'd do? He'd say, Tamara, we'll see. That was his answer every single time. Why? Because our agreement was that commitments are based on results. And when you hold yourself to that level where come hell or high water, when I'm talking to him next Monday, I better have committed. Because whether I actually committed or not, was whether I got the results the next week. When you as an entrepreneur and as a business owner start holding yourself accountable to come hell or high water, I'm putting 25 women who are in transition, point in their life, ready to make a decision. Let's just say that's your niche. And I'm going to do that 25 times by August 1st. I love it. But my answer is going to be, we'll see. Because it's up to you to prove to yourself how much strength you have as a business owner. Because 
if life depended on it, you'd figure out a way to get those 25 women to your place and through. And that's the difference in a mindset. And so I truly hope that you start to run a business, but run it from a place of committing. Because it's kind of like the car that flips over on a person and you love that person underneath. We've all heard the story of the superhuman strength of the mom that can push the car off. That's because they're 100% committed to getting that car off the human. You can do the same thing. And it, all it takes is a little bit of a mind shift to not only set a goal, but hold yourself accountable to that as a commitment. If you were to do that for the next three months, you will not believe yourself, your horses, the growth that happens in that space and your business. I guarantee it. So anybody got any commitments? Whether you got them in there or not, are you willing to find the commitments to run this like a business? Do what it takes to run it like a business um, and actually bravely go towards what it is you actually want. So I'd love to know. Anybody hands up? I know Jess and I, we're working on a couple of really big things right now. It scares the pants off me. I'm not going to say there's not fear. It scares the pants off me, but we're committing. You know, that's the way it is. So anybody here? So Raven's being, um, I, I think I'm getting into a bigger chat. Yeah I, I, yeah, I think I'm into a bigger chat. But yeah, so anybody doing that? Anybody? And again, this is your level. This is not about tearing it up on someone else's level because that's how imposter comes in. This is about being a business owner and tearing it up on your level and what you want. Yeah, Denise. Awesome. I love that. Yeah. Reignite your commitment. And I love it's your commitment. It's not for me to tell you what you want to do, but what's your commitment? Or, and there's nothing wrong with this, are you willing to maybe admit this is just a hobby for me? And if that's the case, cool. Fantastic. Commit to being at the highest possible level as a hobby that you enjoy. Nothing wrong with that. But if you want to be in business and you want to say you're in business and you want to get out of the struggle, start committing to your highest possible, your zone of genius, your space of empowerment. Um, and, you know, it's that vulnerability piece. So I love, actually, I said vulnerability and Carmody just said to monitor my finances better. But phenomenal. So get us rock solid goal around that, you know, you know, like better is great. What does that mean to you? So love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, so we're business people, focus on what you can do. I'm not gonna go really too deep here because I know I'm gone long, but so often we focus on what we cannot do. So number one, I have no covered arena. I hear this all the time from equine entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. I can't do this work because I don't have a covered arena. Neither do I. So let's go with that. Um, the riding barn up the road is charging $40. Who am I to charge $150? The promise of teaching someone to ride a horse and the promise of growth and transformation in a human's life are two different promises. Nothing wrong with the riding barn. There's a riding barn up the road. They have a dude ranch. It's beautiful. It's way nicer than my facility when it comes down to, you know, what it looks like on the outside. Um, and they charge, I think it's $35. That's fantastic. Because if I get clients who should be at a riding barn because we're not in it for high level growth and transformation, I refer them there. But it's about focusing on what you can do because I'm not going to do this work for 40 an hour. The promise of teaching someone to ride because I hear this argument all the time or the promise of growth and transformation are two different promises, okay? Get cemented in your genius and what you do you cut through the noise and you stop marketing to the wrong people. What's another one we hear all the time? Oh yeah, I live rural, no one will drive. Oh yeah, this is a good one. I live in the middle of nowhere. Um, Terry, and I know you're kind of close to me in the world. Um, so you can probably shake your head that I live in the middle of nowhere. Like there's like where I live, there might be like 40 people and the closest town is 940 people and that's half an hour away. And the closest town that's over, you know, that is like four hours. We have people come from all over the world. Why? Because we treat this like a business. We hold ourselves to a very high level of accountability on transformation and growth. And people come. Why? Because they're looking for the place that can provide what they're looking for. That growth, that peace, whatever that peace is. And we stay within our zone of genius. Okay. So again, this is about focusing on what you can do. And lastly, these are the four that I hear all the time. I have no mental health background. 
I can't do this. Horses are going to dig in deep. They're going to find something. I have no mental health background. You're right. If you work in imposter, if you decide to do equine assisted, where horses just help you, but you're the guru, you're going to sit in imposter and you're going to sit in this place of, oh shit, I have no mental health background. Okay. Or maybe you do, but again, this is the biggest argument I hear. Um, ask yourself better, better questions. So the better question to myself when I was feeling I have no mental health background was, where's the real problem here? And the real problem wasn't that I didn't have a mental health background. It was that I was being the guru and having my horses assist. So asking yourself better questions. So no covered arena, you know what? Neither do we. And when we made the money to put up the covered arena, I realized that the magic doesn't happen in a covered arena. It doesn't not happen there either. Don't get me wrong. It's that the magic is the horse human connection. And we had built our business outside in the elements, in the cold. People who come to us know they're going to get a butt kicking and it might be minus 40 to do that. <laughs> and it's in that place where people in our facility strip down to figure out who they truly are. And so when we made the money, we had the money saved to put up that cover, you know, we decided not to because we realized for our clientele and our business that was a detriment that wasn't moving us forward. So again, I had to ask myself better questions. Now there's people at beautiful covered arenas. It really serves their work very, very well. Don't allow the obstacles to hold you back. In every obstacle, there's an opportunity. In every one of these, I live rural, nobody will come. We just created a name for ourselves that people made the decision they couldn't not come. The riding barn down the road, those beautiful cabins and a dude ranch, they could probably stay overnight for what, I, what we charged for an hour. It was a different promise. We promise transformation results and we hold ourselves to that level. And so let's get one in the chat, each of you. What is a current obstacle that you need to just look at from a different point of view? And again, I'm being vulnerable and telling you I've had all of these. So what's one for you that you are allowing yourself to be held back from truly creating the business that you're you're ready to create, that you want to create the impact in the world? What is it that you're allowing yourself? So, so Raven's saying that she lives at the 25 minutes down the end of a dirt road. And that's something I'm 20 <laughs> minutes, right? But people drive out to my place because it's the last place okay. at the end of the gravel road and there's peace and silence and we're really close to nature. Like that's the reason why people come. And that's what I work with and mm -hmm. offer to my clients as well. Yeah. So in every, everybody's got obstacles. It's up to you to decide how you pivot that and truly use it as an opportunity. I'm the same. I live in the middle of nowhere uh, in the exact same thing. There's many people who've never been out here. And that's that's the place is that we provide a place of solace when people come out and it's just getting them out the first time. So making the decision. So what were our things? So, Denise, so I asked the question, what is your and I love the vulnerability of willing to say I'm I'm letting this hold me back. OK, that's great. So currently, and it's not forever, it's just that currently I'm letting myself be held back by that. So I don't have my place yet. Great, Denise. So, and, and I don't want to get into each of you here. How do you turn that into an opportunity? So Denise, again, it could be the opportunity at the place that you are working out of with horses, um, that it's a great location and people like it, or that there's other people around and there's a really good feeling. Or again, you've got to work your own piece for now as you work towards what it is. Um, okay, great. Raven's saying exact opposite, that it's not an obstacle, it's an opportunity. You use the fact that you're in, in the middle of nowhere for a blessing for retreats. Totally. We as horse people underestimate that the rest of the world isn't living like this, you know, and that there's so much in that. Love it. Yeah, so extreme heat in the summer, rain in the winter, long drive from the city. So yeah, how do you turn all these things? And quick, Carmody, we are very cold in the winter um, and summer's fine, but we always use the elements as how we build. And so when it's, you know, really cold, it's getting people out and talking about strength and resilience and that you showed up when it's windy as hell. And it's actually kind of dangerous to be by the horses. We don't cancel. We talk about uh, eye of the storm and how you become calm in the eye of the storm. And guess what? When they find their calm in the eye of the storm, the horses show up even though it's wild out, right? And then we pivot that conversation to what is your current storm? What is the eye of the storm in your life that you're in? 
And how are you going to find the calm in that eye of the storm? And so that's how we use weather um, regardless. And if we have a belief that people don't come because of the weather, nobody's showing up. If you have the belief that this is a business, I need to run it like a business. I need to work within the elements we have. And this is how I'm going to do it. You start to change the perception of the people coming. We are the only facility in our area open for anything, like anything after about minus 25. We don't ever close. And we have more clients when it is bloody cold out than ever. Because number one, they have nowhere else to go. Number two, that's probably the place when they need it the most because they're stuck inside. They have nowhere else that's open, nothing else. And so we show up regardless of the weather and that's where people really tear down what's happening for them. So uh, what else do we have for obstacles? Um, worrying about what others think about. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, yeah, Betty, and that's huge. And mindset training is just as important as business training, as is horse training. So you're in the right place. Round pen is horses, business, mindset, ability. That's what we do. So uh, we'll get ship shape on uh, some mindset. Um, oh, Terry Ann, mine was my job. I've now retired. Retired is no longer an obstacle or an excuse, Terry Ann, right? Sometimes we can like, I, you know, I do the same thing, right? Oh, I'm too busy doing this or that. So now it's like, okay, now it's time to set commitments, right? Commitments are based on results. Love that, Terry Ann. Uh, Denise is saying the owner is allowing you to use the place. I consider it a blessing. You don't have the responsibility of the upkeep. What a great way to turn an obstacle, Denise, into an opportunity. I don't have my own place, but how blessed are we to have somewhere to do this work? I love it. Um, yeah, I sent a link. To, I think that's another conversation. Um, Betty on my arena flood in the middle. Leadership back one guided retreat, moved horses into stalls, set up with chairs, blankets, did a guided meditation. They loved it. Absolutely. Fly by the seat of your pants. Unknown moments. <laughs> unknown moments. Yeah, we always talk about facilitating in unknown moments. That's the brilliance and magic of this work. Facilitate in the unknown moments. Uh, yeah, Carmody, totally. Use Eye of the Storm. I use it all the time. And it just really... Um, yeah, people get it because you know what? In your practice, I guarantee people are in storms. They really are. And it's like, how do you find calm in the eye of the storm? Okay, I'm going to, uh, my storm is slowly clearing. My spouse dying after we moved here. Yeah, yeah. It took a good couple of years to get solid footing emotionally and financially, bit by bit, making progress, trying not to be hard on yourself. That's uh, that's really big. And, uh, you know, we're working a lot in grief right now because the realization that grief is loss. And if we come from a place that grief is loss of anything, it could be identity, who we were, of a spouse. I mean, it, if grief is just loss, we can work more compassionately with other people and to ourselves. All right. I know I'm over the hour. I apologize. <clears throat> Sometimes you got to let go of the reins. So when we're business owners, the biggest key is that we stay with our commitments. Maybe not how it looks. Maybe we had a, as Raven said, you know, that you had just moved there. And of course, there's a view of how things would look, but it's about staying committed to the goal, even though things aren't working out the way they looked. And you know what? So often, if you're willing to say, I'm a business owner, I'm sharing this work around the world, whatever those pieces are that are most important to you, if you just commit to that, if you commit to the fact that these are my goals, come hell or high water, I'm doing it, these pieces, and allowing yourself that space to let go of the reins of how it has to happen, so often you've proven to the world, to yourself, whatever that is. I'm in it to win it, I'm doing it. Things show up, pieces align, and you can build a business to a height that you on yourself, pardon me, you on your own could never have gotten to. And so I truly empower you that. Set your goals, know where you wanna go, commit that you're doing it, but allow the rest to be up to something else. Because you never, never know. I'm not going to get into the whole thing, but I'll tell you my first, I was 12 months in when the largest equine federation in the world came to my little place in the absolute middle of nowhere, approached me and did a documentary on horse facilitated development. Could I have set the goal to say, I'm bringing the FEI in and we're doing this? Sure. Would it have happened in my first 12 months? Not a chance. 
but I made the commitment to have people from all over the world experience the power of the horse human connection. It just so happened that when I stuck committed to that goal of becoming an international place for people to come, the largest international equine federation in the world came knocking at my door. That's the power of making a decision that you are in business and come hell or high water committing to it. So sometimes you gotta faith. This is a Steve Jobs quote as we close up. You can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. This is the biggest piece. To be an entrepreneur, you need to be brave and you need to be bold and you need to be willing to say, maybe this sounds crazy, but I'm gonna change the face of equine facilitated development. Or I'm gonna provide a safe and sacred space for people to come heal. Or, 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 you don't, you can't connect those dots looking forward. It only ever connects looking backwards, but you have to be willing to be the person who puts up their hand, maybe bravely and says, I'm an entrepreneur. I work with the magic of the horse human connection and I'm gonna make a difference. And that difference is your goals in what you want, because this is uniquely you. And so when you get to that place of trying to compare yourself to what somebody else is doing or compare yourself with the neighbors or, or, or understand that imposter sits in incompetence and genius and significance and impact lie in that highest possible level in genius where you should be working. So are we getting to the end? I think so. Yep. Jessica has an exercise. Do you want to go over it or should we just tell them it'll be? Yeah, I'll go over it really quick. So um, a couple of you are new. One of the things that we really promote in horse facilitated development is having tools for your back pocket as opposed to exercises that are step by step. And if something doesn't fall within that step, you feel lost. So we provide tools for your back pocket. 54321 Make a Decision is inspired by Mel Robbins, who has the five second rule book. Um, but essentially you count down five, four, three, two, one, make a decision because it's often our first instincts are the one that we should go with the most. It's that innate knowing, but then we get really good talking ourselves out of it and saying why and self-doubt creeps in. So um, this is going to come out in the newsletter. So if you haven't signed up uh, to it, make sure that you follow that link and put your email in um, and it will be a downloadable PDF that has lots of like fluidity in how you can implement this in, in your sessions and in your business with yourself when you're trying to build it and become an entrepreneur. Awesome. So yeah, this is a real simple tool. It's coming out. I use it all the time. You know, it's so easy to get into procrastination. Um, and I honestly, it's how I can get myself off, off, off the couch sometimes <laughs> or ready to hit sand or whatever that stop is. Scrolling. So, <laughs> stop scrolling. Uh, yeah. Ask the thing that's hard to ask in a session sometimes. So yeah, really fun exercise. It's coming out links in there to sign up. It'll be out by tomorrow along with the recording. So I hope, and I'd love to know in one or two words, maybe one sentence, one of a couple things, either what did you hear today that you can use moving yourself forward, that piece that maybe inspired you, or maybe that piece that um, you think, oh yeah, that's an aha moment, or a goal, or something that you're going to take out of today, because you spent an hour in something here on a Saturday or a Sunday. For some of you, it's really early in the morning. Some of you, it's been a long day but you're brave and bold enough to show up. So I'd love to know. So someone is saying hope, powerful. And whether you do it here or even one step further, I encourage you, if you haven't joined the round pen, be brave and bold, I love that. Join there and drop it in there. Share it with somebody else. I was on there today and this is what I learned. This is the piece I'm gonna take with me. This is my goal. This is my commitment. You know, share it with the world because it's in that place that we grow. So sometimes you got to let go of the reins. Totally trust the dots, dots somehow connect. Huge, Betty Ann. It's absolutely huge. And I always say not only that they can connect, but they can maybe connect in a way that we personally could never have orchestrated and allowed 
to show up in our lives. Yeah. Uh, incompetence versus genius. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of thought in there. And it's always, you know, if it ain't a hell yeah, it's a hell no. That's what I always decide in my genius. If it feels like a hell yeah, I've got to do this, it's ingenious. If it's feeling like mm, not quite a hell yeah, it's just got to become a hell no. So um, eye of the storm, be accountable to your goals. So yes, get in the round pen. Uh, if you're not there, just get on Facebook, search up the round pen. We're in there, participate in there. It is not a spamming group. It is somewhere for us to collaborate, to be as horse facilitated development, be one to grow. And so our next live round pen, so everybody knows, is April 8th which is a Monday. Oh, it's a Monday here. We always go with one time zone. So once you figure it out, you know, you're online. April 8th at noon, 12 p.m. PS2, PS2, PST. Um, and there was something else I was going to bring up, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's uh, if, uh, yeah, if you, if you want more of this, if you say, holy hell, I need that. Um, we do have our Wildly Unbridled uh, business program coming out in the next four weeks. Uh, if you want information ahead on how that looks and what it is, honestly, it's about building your Wildly Unbridled business, 100% unique to you. So it gets into niche, very, very deep, coming out with very clear intention on what your niche is, your zone of genius, confidence, how to facilitate in unknown moments, how to market through inspiration, and how to get rid of burnout. And so it's a six week program. Yeah, six week program. Any questions, feel free to reach out to me. After that, uh, or aside from that, I'd love to see you um, April 12th. And uh, thank you so much, everybody for showing up. So we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you in the round pen, get on the newsletter, we'll get this out to you. And uh, oh, there's one more really exciting thing coming down so be watching that space. And what I'll tell you is the first ever Horse Facilitated Development Summit conference, including awards where your facility could be winning awards, is launching out June 22nd and 23rd. It's oh, an really online summit you can do from anywhere in the world. We have our first keynote speaker. We're not going to let you know who it is. But so it is someone that every <laughs> single one of you on this call would know. Mm -hmm. Professionals get together. Professionals grow uh, their business based on learning, motivating. Um, it's it's going to be incredible. And like I said, it really comes down to even that space where there is going to be um, awards for facilities. Um, yeah. And so it's about a movement of something bigger. So thank you everybody for showing up. Watch the space. You're going to be hearing more about that. Early birds coming out really, really soon. And uh, whatever you're doing, make it a fabulous rest of your day. So thanks for showing up, Bye. everyone. Bye.